Hello and welcome back to Small Room Audio. Today's review, eh, it's not going to be pleasant, it could get ugly. In fact, I'm going to say it's not a review, it's more of a rant. So bear with me. Before we get to the juicy stuff, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there lived a young man called David. A young man in his late 30s. That young man was a big audio fan and he long dreamed of taking his hideously oversized horn speakers out of his man cave and into his living room. This would start to form what would become an epic Dolby Atmos theatre system. It would sonically blow the minds of all that would listen to it. But there was one teensy weensy problem. Tushy, I've had a really good idea, right? How about I bring those really big Clips Cornwall 3 speakers in from the man cave, yeah? We'll put them either side of the television, then I'll drill four holes in the ceiling for Atmos speakers, and we'll get rear surrounds, which are also quite big, and maybe a massive great big subwoofer to make the most amazing theatre experience I can possibly think of. What do you reckon? No. Uh, fine. Yeah, okay. Probably a problem that a lot of us face we have to compromise. So what did that compromise look like? The word we're looking for here is Sonos. Yes, Sonos. How could I have both a home theatre and a wife that didn't want to punch me hard in the face? Well, we needed something that looked good and sounded all right for my audiophile ears. Sonos was the answer. And if you haven't been living under a rock for the last couple of decades, you'll know it's one of the leading manufacturers of lifestyle streaming audio products. And in my opinion, for what they're meant for, i.e. not super hardcore audio critical listening, but room filling, good pleasant sound with cool design and good build quality, and being very easy to use for all of the family, I think they're an excellent product. In fact, so much so, I own a Play 5 for my kitchen, two Play 1s upstairs, and for home theatre, I'm rocking a Play Bass with two Play 1s as surround sound. So that creates quite a nice soundscape, and you know, for my purposes, it looks good, my wife's happy, compromise is made. Particularly in a small living room, you know, we can deal with what it sounds like. But, this is where it starts to get pretty ranty. There was, of course, something that would be better that would come along. And that something is the Sonos Arc. Plenty of reviews out there saying how amazing it was, the first Dolby Atmos product that Sonos has created, truly taking it to the next level of home theater for a lifestyle product, adding in height and more width, having a better soundstage, all the things that I love. So, as you'll see from this next bit of footage, when it arrived, unboxing in the very nice box that it comes in, I was a very excited, exuberant child unwrapping this new toy. In fact, I couldn't wait to get it out and give it a good go. You see my wobbly lockdown hair there bouncing about. This was quite a moment for me. And it did turn out to be quite a moment, but in a very bad way. Because you see, when I fired the arc up, it had problems. Very big problems. Let's go through them. First of all, that much touted Atmos height. Well, there's a little bit of height there, but we're talking very occasionally, and really it doesn't, doesn't do that much to the sound. You know, you'd expect something to be there, and only occasionally would you get it. Then you look at the treble. Very bright, these speakers, quite harsh, piercingly so. And you know, I like a bright speaker. I've just reviewed Bowers and Wilkins speakers, which are traditionally bright. Now, this, this makes the Bowers seem soft as you like. This isn't very nice to listen to. You've also got the bass. Oh, the bass. So, put on something like Six Underground on Netflix. Not the best film, but quite a good atmosphere film to test this with. And you get farty, blown out horrible bass. I mean, those little drivers in that Atmos speaker, the Sonos Arc, are working overtime and having a nightmare. It is not clever and it is not nice to listen to. And then finally, the mid-range. Possibly the, the biggest letdown of all of it because Sonos speakers are quite good with the mid-range normally. They're kind of quite warm, they draw you in, and it's not there. It's hollow. It's soulless. Uh, I think someone on one of the forums described this as a tin can. Well, it's not quite as bad as that, but for 800 quid, come on, you've, you've got to do better than that. I wanted to wait to review this or to rant about it until the, re the update had been released, and it has been released now. And I'm happy to say a lot of the base issue has gone away. 
but the mid-range and the tinniness, not so much. Now, I've kind of come to the end of the road with this now. I, I wanted to give them a chance, and although I do think Sonos will make it better over time, I've got to say, Sonos, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. It's that bad. Now get to the naughty step right now. The audio file on the naughty step, away you go and think about what you've done. Okay, that's it for now. Rant over. I'm sure it will turn into a very good product eventually, but right now I would not recommend it. I would say stick with the Sonos products you've got or explore another Dolby Atmos product because right now it's just not there. Anyway, I don't like doing negative reviews. I like to be positive and enthused about something. I can't be that today, which is a shame. But if you'd like to have a positive review next time, which I promise it will be, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you back here very soon. Where did everybody go? Oh no.